and company. 216-578-1007 or 800-348-1007. Rest assured, when all else fails to entertain you, so will he. You guys suck! This is the Alan Cox Show on 100.7 WMMS. I got another $1,000 for you here in a few minutes, about six or seven minutes from now. It's a shot for you to get some money courtesy of the Buzzard Bookie. Listen for those keywords because they come at you about once every hour. About 13 times each day during the week. This week and next will be your last uh, handful of chances. Uh, this round, we're going to be giving away that Buzzard bike very soon, too. Going to give you all the details on that. I'll be your host for that. That'll be very exciting. We'll see who's going to fire up this custom Harley that we're giving away. Courtesy of Budweiser and WMMS. Guardians doing two of three tonight against the Pirates in Pittsburgh. Uh, They shut them out last night, 11 to nothing. And so they'll do it again tonight. If you're looking for some appropriate gear from CLE Clothing Company, remember all this month, your promo code is what, Bill? Ha! 20. Hot 20. H O T 20. Hot 20 for 20% off at CLE Clothing Company, uh, irrespective of what you want to get. It doesn't really matter if you're doing it in store or online. You can use Hot 20. Mary's off very soon to the Fallout Boy show. I can't wait. How to- <laughs> so you're driving, What's you're, your you're going song? solo. So you're driving yourself. Uh huh. And you'll be there yourself. Uh huh. Not drinking. Uh huh. Boy, this is dedication to one's favorite band. Yes. Good for you. Yes. Um, the VIP check-in starts in six minutes. It's for only from 5.30 to 7.30. Oh, you have to check in as a VIP. Yeah, or you don't get, like, your merch package and all that kind of stuff. So they say, like, if you get there after 7.30, then essentially you don't get any of the stuff you paid for. <laughs> you don't get the... What, what's oh, what's really? on the merch package? Um, it doesn't say. It just okay. says exclusive merch package, and then... Um, I'm sure you'll put it on your story. Yes, of course I will. And I'm sure it'll, you'll be like, what the hell? <laughs> um, yeah, like last time when it was a quote commemorative ticket, which is just a piece of plastic. Oh, no, no, a John commemorative ticket. That was a job, dude. The John Mayer, John Mayer merch package sucked. It was a tote bag, a pen, a notebook, and a commemorative ticket. Those are always scams. I mean, not scams, but they're all they always under deliver. I, I just I'm like, I'd be okay bucks. with a t shirt or like. Yeah. Something I can wear, a pair of sunglasses, or you know what I mean? Something right. like that. Right, something useful. Yeah, but... Um, You're going to remember the show. You don't need a commemorative ticket. Right. So that ends at 7.30, and then the VIP lounge closes at 8.30. So you got to get there before 7.30 to get your stuff and check in and go hang out in the lounge or whatever. Hmm. Which also could be a scam. The lounge could just be a tent. I have no idea what it's going to look like. It's probably just that little area to the... Mm-mm, that's different. That's, this, different? that's the Huntington Lounge. Because oh, yeah. these were sold as separate things. You All can right. get the Huntington VIP package, and then you can get... Mine's called, like, So Much for Stardust, or So Much something like that. And that's the tour, right? The, the new right. album? What, um... What's your favorite song by them? Um, either Thanks for the Memories, Hum Hallelujah... Or I don't care. Those thanks are for, my. Thanks for the memories. Is their best song. I don't care is really good too. I don't too. know the other songs that you mentioned. I only know the first one. The song I don't care was big on the radio. It was I think. Um, <laughs> Who listens to the radio? <laughs> <laughs> I can't ever say the name of this. It's I think it's Folly Ado. Folly Ado. Yes. Okay. So that the Joker I don't, sequel. Yes. Okay. So I don't care was off of that album, which I think was like 2013 or something like that. But it was awesome. That's a really, I really like that song a lot. Oh, 2008. Jeez, man. 2008. I'm so old. I'm so old. I'm so old. I've been listening to them for like the last week or two. Well, and that is the best, uh, that is the best known song off that album. Yeah, that's the one that was like the breakout on that album. But like Take This to Your Grave was 2003. That was when I was in middle school. And then every year of high school, they released one. So they had Infinity on High. They had Folly Ado. I don't even like saying that because if I, if I sound dumb. 
Um, what, are you going to be close enough that you can say, like, get their attention? No. I'm in, like, the... There's, like, the pit area and then the box seats, and then I'm behind the box seats. They have seats just for women? Yes. You have to have a box. It's a, very controversial. <laughs> very, very yeah, controversial. Yeah, man! <laughs> We're going to put you right in this slot. Right. <laughs> Slots and boxes. Mm-hmm. Well, listen, if you're into rich kid punk, then Fallout Boy is for you. And why not? I was just complaining. Bored, to, rich kids you with time on their hands. I've and... never complained, but I was <laughs> complaining to my sister that Pete Wentz, I want him to cut his hair and wear makeup again. Because he's in this, like, long hair, man bun, weirdo phase. And I liked, like, short, spiky black hair with a ton of guy liner Pete Wentz. Well, that was 20 years ago. I know. You know. And he's got, like. He's, like, mid-40s now. Well, that would be what I would like him to do on stage tonight. Hmm. Cut his hair and put on eyeliner. He's not still married to what's her name, is he? Ashley Simpson. Yeah, I think I think so. That's a question for Cody. I don't know if they broke no, up or not. He, she, Ashley Simpson, is married to Diana Ross's son. Oh, really? What, oh, they name? oh they split up in 2011. Yeah, that that Dang. was her first husband. She's with uh, what is his name, Travis or something? Oh, he's got long blonde hair. Pete Wentz, yeah. yeah. Gwen's been watching that claim to fame. Where it's the relatives of famous people. Yeah. I played the cl- clip a couple of weeks ago. It went viral because Tom Hanks' knees flipped the F out. But this is season two. This is a show I had never heard of before, and it's season two. So Gwen went back, and she's watching season one. And the funny thing about the show is it runs between people who you should be able to guess who they're related to in one millisecond because they look so much like them, and then other people you have no clue whatsoever. Like uh, Laverne Cox's twin brother. Because usually it's a nephew. They usually don't get that close. Usually it's not a son or a daughter. And I'm like, how could they not? It's the easiest week of all time. And then there's like Simone Biles' relative on there because she looks exactly like Simone Biles. And then other people, they're like, because I don't quite know how the show works. I'm like half watching when she's sitting there watching it. So people get clues and then, you know, and like the... What do you win? Jonas Brothers. Uh, money? I don't know. I, the, the, the Whoever makes it to the end, I guess, I assume you get money? I don't know. Does but it like, go to them or does it go to like a charity? No clue. Because they're not rich. They're just related to someone who's rich. True. Yeah. So they could probably use 50 grand, right? <laughs> or however much the prize is. Yeah. But it's such a thin premise for a show that... It's not, I don't know. If she wasn't watching it, I would never have it on. I would never even know what they were doing. But um, anyway, Pete Wentz is not married to Ashley Simpson. By the way, Joe Manganiello and Sofia Vergara are getting divorced too. Oh, and if you sweet. follow. There you go, Bill. <laughs> speaking your of time. Speaking of. Snatch um, you up, Joe. There you go. She's out there. Speaking of Pittsburgh, that's, uh, we were talking about Wiz Khalifa, a dude called from Kennywood. Joe Manganiello from Pittsburgh, the Paris of Appalachia. Uh, He went to Mount Lebanon High School, went to Carnegie Mellon. And uh, I follow her. I don't follow him on social media, but the signs were all there because she's been on some long vacation in Italy. He's nowhere to be seen. She just had a birthday and he posted like, happy birthday. (laughs) Not honey, not darling, not. So these two, they don't have kids, it right? It is your birthday. It is your booth birthday. So, yeah, they're, you know, it, it, what it seems to be is a situation where, like, the thing that attracts you ends up repelling you. Mm-hmm. Because they're like, hey, he's just a good, he likes to have fun, blah, blah. And that's what she liked about him at first. But now she wants to hang out at home and he's out, he wants to do stuff. But they're two incredibly good looking people. They're age appropriate. I mean, she's got a grown ass son. She, you know, she got pregnant when she was like eleven or something. But um, she's got some grown ass kid. And then she was in like a bunch of lawsuits with her ex boyfriend because they had frozen some embryos. Mm -hmm. Did she win that, by the way? I think she did. Yes. He was uh... as she was the creator of those embryos. I think that they ruled in her favor. But Sophia Vergara and Joe Manganiello have been. Married for seven years. I didn't know she was fifty one. I think the guy that she, looks she, was, great. she was with that wanted the eggs, he was he was like a spam or not a spam, um what what's the fake ham? A spam, right? Yeah, spam. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he was a spam like uh 
heiress or something like that. Well, be an heir. <laughs> no, he's heiress. a guy. Spam heiress. <laughs> he had some type of fortune. Do you know the difference between heir and heiress? Yeah, one's a male, one's female. Yeah. Nick Loeb is the guy you're talking about. I thought he was heir to the ear fortune. No. <laughs> oh, come on. Because, no, he comes from a really rich family. He's part of the Seagram's family. Interesting. Yeah. So, so not spam. That, not spam. <laughs> is that the wine Seagram's, cooler? well, among other things, yeah. yeah. It's a beverage company. Beverage company. I don't know why I thought it But, like, his family are all, like, hedge fund people. His grandfather founded Lehman Brothers and, you know. I mean, they went belly up in 09 or whatever. But, I mean, that, that dude was a rich dude. That's how you get Sofia Vergara. You better either be famous or you better be rich. That's just... That's a different type of wealth. Like, that's just, like, no matter what you do. You yes, it's wealth go. you didn't earn. But, like, I think I like the Hammer fortune. Like, their entire family. Like, not just. You mean Army Hammer. No, MC. <laughs> well, he blew all his money. But so. then he brought, he got it back. But he Did got he? family. Yeah, he like, got rich again. His cousins are rich. Like, their whole bloodline is wealthy. Like, oh, fine, I'll go work, with, go work with my uncle who does, you know, something with oil. And then if he doesn't want me, then I'll go work for my cousin who's like a, you know. Well, that's why when Army Hammer got canceled, he just decamped to Turks and Caicos. Yes. Because he doesn't need the money. It's amazing. I'm like, you're just an actor because you're bored. Like, Well, he's su- really good looking, too. That's what I'm saying. You have it all. So that's, in my mind, my insecure mind, I have to go to what's his flaw. He has stinky feet or he's like a. Or um, not. No. Or not. He's got to have a flaw. Army Ham- I, I, I happen to like Army Hammer. I think he's good in movies. I think he's cute, too. Does he eat people? I didn't say cute. I said I think he he's cute. He wants to eat people. Yeah. Oh, he, he was he a cute. He has an act on. It makes him horny. <laughs> Talking about eating people <laughs> makes him horny. 100% cannibal is what he said. But what kind of world are we living in where you can't even talk about eating people? I can't control my horny level. Well, it wasn't necessarily the talking about eating people that got him canceled. I think yeah, it was he was the, choking bitches the out. The actual like, abuse. Yeah. Right. He was choking bitches yeah. out. <laughs> well, when you put it like that, I was just beating you to the punch, punky. You know what? I don't think this partnership is working. And now this, if I am going to Flavor City, I am going by myself. Flavor City, Flavor Town. So she uh, just celebrated her 51st birthday, and if you follow her, you saw all those pictures, and not a Joe in sight. So I don't think it comes as a shock to anybody, but she's... Maybe she's entering her bill phase. A gorgeous woman. I guess she's been on one of the America's Got Talent judges. I just thought she was out there just hanging out, but I guess she's on that show. I don't watch that show, so... But people are like, oh, no, she's 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 on America's Got Talent, you know. Yep. So, uh, yeah, whatever. That'll be fine. Joe Manganiello will go on and he'll find... Well, how did that dude get famous? True Blood? Yep. Uh, I didn't watch that True show, Blood but isn't that what you And he was in the Magic Mike's movies. Magic, Magic Mike's. Mike, right. And uh, I think there was one other thing that helped get him going. You know the wildest thing to me about those Magic Mike movies? All directed by Steven Soderbergh. Yeah. I had no clue. Magic Mike's Last Dance was the most recent one. That's the one where uh, Channing Tatum and um, Salma Hayek drool all over each other. The Joe Manganiello is Big Dick Richie. <laughs> ah, I love it. <clears throat> okay, I got to give you some money here. It's a thousand bucks from the Buzzard Bookie. Listen closely, and I hope you win. This is your chance to bet with the Buzzard Bookie and win $1,000 now. Enter this nationwide keyword at WMMS.com. Money, that's money. Enter it now at WMMS.com. Alan, how dare you not discuss Ariana Grande's impending divorce? How, how, how dare I? <laughs> I, did, I, didn't, I didn't know it rose to the level of how dare I. She got engaged like one day after her album dropped, or one day before her album dropped. She been married like a year and a half. Was it her album or was it her tour, Cody? I'm starting. She didn't go on tour because of COVID, so it was her album. I'm yeah. starting to sense. Why are you asking Cody a... not Perez Bilton? Because you don't know. I don't. It was all country. I didn't, today. I didn't even know she was married. <laughs> I'm starting to sense a pattern here. Some people just love being in love. Yes. And when it gets busy or tough, they go, I'm out. Because you can do that. A new way. It's this the way like to do things. This is like her third time being engaged. Dalton Gomez, no relation. Uh, 
Maybe she's married him for the double hyphenated name. Yeah, they're divorcing after less than two years of marriage. I don't know who that guy is. He's but, a nobody. Uh, That's the whole thing. He's, he's like a, a real, photographer or something. No, he's a real estate agent. Oh, real estate agent? Who's the photographer? That's man. Halsey's man. That's what it is. Oh. Well, still, it doesn't matter if you've been married a year and a half or you've been married five days. This guy was inside Ariana Grande. Probably all of quarantine. No, she was with Pete Davidson in quarantine, I thought. No, she wasn't. They got they started dating in 2020 during COVID. Stop yelling at me. I didn't yell. I'm just telling you. You're aggravated. I'm not aggravated. I'm spitting straight facts. <laughs> you just don't like it. <laughs> he is spitting straight facts, isn't he? That's not his fault. Blah, 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 blah. Mm. Straight facts. So, listen, if these crazy kids can't get it together, I mean, she is 30. Better figure it out. A little long in the tooth. But she looks like she's 12. Yes, I know. But there's got to be a Pete Davidson prank in there somewhere, though. Like, she's back on the market. He's... Still getting his head right, I think, yeah, right? Rehab, I think, right now, right? Yeah. I just don't know who I want for her. Like, I don't... Tell think, me. Why Why does it matter who's with her? It doesn't matter, per se, but I just... Who do you I, want for her? I imagine, like... Someone age-appropriate, or no, should she start Stavros dating, like, Halkius. some... Stavros <laughs> I, was, some I think hedge Stavros fund guy. and Ariana Grande would be perfect together. I'm picturing, like, an actor. She's not, like, a wag. I can't see her doing anything with, like, a... Like a uh, basketball player or football player. She doesn't seem like that type of girl, but she does seem like she's into actors. So I don't know. Maybe uh, James Marsden if he wasn't married, or who's a hot single guy? Maybe she goes the other way. Maybe she starts uh, having a relationship with a female. Ooh. Right? That's how you get people paying attention to you and talk. You know, if she starts hanging out with. Jeanette McCurdy. Millie Bobby get, Brown. Get, get them back together. Right. What was their show called? Their spinoff show? Cat and Sam. Cat and Sam. You know, my good friend Jeanette McCurdy, who joined this show many, many years ago, she wrote a book called I'm Glad My Mom is Dead because the relationship that she had with her mom was just, to call it toxic would be the understatement of the year. But there was a story a couple of days ago about how she didn't realize or she began to realize how broken their relationship was because her mom showered with her until she was 18. Ah! And boy, what a lucky mom. What a lucky, lucky mom. It wasn't just her, though. It was her and her brother. Yeah, but her mom was giving her, like, breast exams. and I mean, it was really psychotic. Yeah, dude. And she already didn't really want to be in showbiz. Her mom, like, forced her into it. This poor girl. I mean, you know, if anybody's going to go off their nut... It would be somebody under those circumstances. But, again, she and I haven't spoken for a long, long time, despite being very good friends. How come she didn't call the show to promote her book? She did. I just said that uh, I was out of time and that um, I I could not accommodate her that day. But if she missed having a showering partner, I said I can probably put you in contact with someone. I've got to take a break. Uh, If you want to send a text, 35192 is how you do it. You can listen wherever you are on the iHeartRadio app. 